sort of starts up without any uh, further ado. I decided to take the plunge. Oh, by the way, hello from Farland. This is a railroad range locomotive. I, I don't have any. I, I have never owned any. The thing, there were two things that uh, made it interesting to me. Was one, it had TTS sound. So, that's one thing. And then the other was that it was about 50 pounds. I mean, how else could you ever possibly get a locomotive with sound for 50 pounds? Well, you can't. So, <clears throat> I've uh, I've assigned it an address and I've run it around on uh, uh, locomotive address three for quite a while. As you see, it's it's uh, it has some molded in details, but uh, nothing like a a true um, full detailed locomotive. No handrails or any of that stuff. But it's got bumpers. I doubt they're sprung. Almost knocked my phone on the floor. One co co one bogies. Take a closer look at that. Now, in the prototype, these three were driven, and this one up here was an idler. And in this case, Hornby has allowed that one to sort of flop around, as you should see, and the others are fairly rigid. And I did worry about um, this wheel arrangement running on my layout, but it turns out the only place that had any trouble was one spot at the joiner, it, it, it had uh, sort of dipped down a little bit, the track had. I don't know why. Maybe I put a nail in it the wrong place. I don't know. But anyway, there was a, a little dip in the rail there, and it, it did not like that. But it, it didn't care about any of the other picadillos all around, which there are plenty of on my layout misaligned track and you name it it didn't seem to bother anything about that apparently they built 200 of these and uh, the build build date according to wikipedia is 1958 to 1962 and as i studied my favorite book john vaughn and all his wonderful photographs there were many, many of examples of the class 40. Oh, my hand's going to be in the way. See what all I can knock over here and break. Loads of coal. Obviously a passenger train, another passenger train, a third one up top. So apparently a fairly versatile locomotive as it turns out. Did lots of different type of work. Being the railroad range, it's quite light, and I have not tested it to see how it can deal with my inclines. Uh, maybe it'll do all right. I don't know. Maybe not. But it does have sound, so um, give me a minute here. We'll try out the sound. Whenever you rail it, you're going to need one of these. Because it... Uh, it's tough to get all those wheels on it, and you'll be driving yourself silly as you mess with them, trying to get them on there, and you just just go ahead and give up. And get out the old railer, put it down, and slip it on the tracks, and there's no fuss. And that's mostly because of these tiny little wheels at the leading ends of the bogies. So I've gone through. There's... There's a huge list of functions, but not all of them are available on this uh, railroad range locomotive. But there are a considerable number of them. 21, 22 actual different functions. 
Some of them don't really vary that much from one to the other. Sort of starts up without any uh, further ado. steps faster, or about step 16, it smooths out. So we've got, I'm not going to show you all of them, but... Impressive. Door close. Fan. Actually, this fan is better than the last locomotive I got. So you can you can get kind of creative there. I thought I'd let you hear some of the sounds it makes from a distance. It has some quite pleasing sounds, actually. Not too loud. I'm never very happy when they turn the sound up so loud that it hurts my ears. Going through a, a microscopically sized speaker. I'm going to have to put it over on the other track for this test. Or actually, maybe this track is probably the best, because this way we've got a gentle slope ahead. Let me bring down a couple of coaches, and we'll put them on there and see what happens. In just a minute. trouble there. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there and I'm going to move you so you can observe going up the hill. Okay, here we go. Sticking that percent and a half grade just fine. Let's back up and put some more coaches on. There's no lights, by the way. But a multitude of sounds. I guess sounds are cheap. Well, it's uh, it's just it's running just fine. There was a slight delay. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's one of those damnable dovetail couplings. The only way I've found to keep them in. Just put a little black tack, just the tiniest ball of black tack on them, and stuff them in the dovetail. Otherwise, they fall out all over the place. And to aggravate me even further, the Hornby ones 
don't fit the Bachman ones, and the Bachman ones won't fit the Hornby ones. Uh, okay, ready for the test. Here we go. Five coaches. No sound. I want to be able to hear the squeal, the wheel slip. Look at that. Well, I'll, I'm impressed. As light as it is, it can still haul five coaches up a 2% grade. Impressive. Well, I'd say that uh, any young modeler who would like DCC sound at a very, very reasonable and affordable price, I think this one would work just fine. So I'd recommend it in those circumstances.